820, section 28.1, we're going to talk about fish. Turn to 820, section 28.1. Hey, can we open the blinds, please? Tori, did I get you? Tori, did I get you? Hey, Baron, make your light yourself up. Your light yourself up in the blinds. <laughs> okay. Let's go backwards. That would work. Uh, okay. It's a little bit bright here. It's good. Listen. Can y'all? Yeah, I thought it was worth. No, it's time you take the trick back. All right. Throw at me. Throw up a little bit, please. Listen. Hey guys, you want to come now? Okay, so we're going to start talking about fish today. We're going through the vertebrates. These are the first, the oldest vertebrates are called fish. Of course, they evolved in the oceans. They also live in fresh water. And we're going to look at some of the different things that they have. What page, man? 820. 820. Now, fish go through a progression. The oldest fish were all filter feeders, and they did not have jaws. Jaws are a later development, and they show in this series of pictures the development of jaws. Jaws evolve from what we call gill arches. If you look at the gills of the fish, they have bony elements that hold, that are able to hold the gills open. And what a fish does is a fish swims through the water and has its mouth open and the water goes in the mouth and comes out the gill arches, the gill openings. And the gill arches hold those gill openings open. And the gill arches have a little bit of a hinge on them so that the fish can open and close its gill openings. As that thing hinges, the gill openings can open and shut. And if you imagine this gill arch evolves where it's bigger and it's, more, and it's closer to the mouth, then all of a sudden you go from an arch that just opens and closes the gills. If you move it forward, then it's a jaw. That's how jaws evolve. Over the time, the gill arches moved forward and got bigger and stronger. And if you follow this uh, progression here, you see jaws. Form. And so the first fish were called jawless fish. They didn't even have any jaws. They were just filter feeders. There are still a couple types of jawless fish around today. There's only two species. What kind? There's the hagfish and the lamprey. And I'll show you some pictures of those. Most fish nowadays have jaws. Yes? How does the jawless fish eat? Filter feed. They suck uh, in water, water comes out of the gills, and it's filtered. Yes? That one on the end kind of looks like a shark. Yes. The first jawed fish were cartilaginous fish like sharks. Are you just saying that because I said that question? Now, fish, Taylor, fish have what we call paired fins. They have a number of different fins that you need to know the names of. The back fins are called the caudal fins. Caudal means toward the back. The anal fin on the back rear. The pelvic fins are on the chest area, hanging down at the bottom. The pectoral fins are on the sides. And then most fish have uh, dorsal fins on their back. Often it comes in pairs where there's two dorsal fins. An anterior dorsal fin and a posterior. What kind of fish is that? I don't know. Beckel fish? Fish have scales. Scales cover the body of the fish. They act as, uh, in a, as protection. Um, and they, uh, they're covered in mucus. They have glands that secrete mucus onto the surface of the fish, and the mucus allows the fish to slide through the water faster. 
it uh, acts against friction. So the scales have different names, stenoid scales, cycloid scales, placoid scales, ganoid scales. I'm not going to require you to know the diff four different types of scales. Just understand what scales do. They protect the fish. They allow it to move through water quickly. So when we're, what we're touching, if like we went to that fish, is that mucus or is that algae we're touching? Mucus. Wait, we don't have to know the those four types of scales? No. I covered myself in That's a little bit too. Faster. That's a little bit too hard, I think. Maybe, maybe a bonus question if you want to look over Bro. Yes. Did you say I would cover myself in mucus? Could I swim faster? Yes. You would. You would move faster through the water. You know, like swimmers, like don't shave their legs or their bodies until like for Less the race, friction. and then they go. That's correct. What about gills? Here's how gills work. Water enters their mouth, flows across the gills, and oxygen from the water diffuses into the blood. And if you look at a gill, if you pull up a gill covering, by the way, the gill covering is called the operculum. If you pull up the operculum, you'll see what we call gill filaments. They look like fingers. Here are some up close. See how they look like fingers? And what happens is blood goes into the gill filament. And here we see blood arriving through a vein, and the blood is blue. And then the blood moves like this. It goes back, and when the blood comes back, it's red because the, uh, the water that flowed around these gill filaments, which are like fingers sticking out, had oxygen in it, and the oxygen diffuses into the blood because the walls of the, the uh, gill filaments are real thin, and oxygen can go right through them. So oxygen diffuses. Remember diffusion, movement from high to low concentration? Oxygen diffuses right into the blood. So these are probably the most delicate structures in the fish's body because their walls are so thin and the blood go, is, is uh, almost, almost just separated by the water by a really thin membrane. Right. So that's why it looks so red. Yeah? Is, uh, is that what you see like, when you catch fish and is that like red stuff from outside? That's their, that's their gill filters. Cool. Mm -hmm. Now, fish have a heart that's basically a two-chambered heart. It has an atrium and a ventricle. I know that looks like four things right there, but trust me, it's a two-chambered heart. The atria receives blood that's low in oxygen. The blood then goes to the ventricle, which squeezes and pumps the blood to the gills. The blood picks up oxygen. From the gills, the blood goes to all the different cells of the fish, delivers the oxygen, becomes blue again, goes back to the heart. So it's one pump, the blood goes to the gills, then to the body, then back. That works for fish. Two chambers is all they need. Humans need a little bit more pumps. We have a four-chambered heart, and I'll show you how that works later when we do mammals. Uh, mammals and birds have four-chambered hearts. The fish are not as active as mammals and birds. Mainly because fish live in the water, the buoyancy of the water holds the fish's body up. The fish doesn't have to hold itself up. We have to hold ourselves up against gravity. There's no water holding our bodies up. So we have to work harder. That's a open or closed circulatory system. You tell me. Closed. Open. open. Just kidding. No, it's closed. It's closed. It's not open. It's not flowing freely. It's, it's in the veins. Closed circulatory system. Watch the blood flow in a fish. All fishes have two chambered hearts. Blood flows in one direction to one chamber, which receives deoxygenated blood from the body tissues. And the second chamber pumps blood directly to the capillaries of the gills, where oxygen is picked up and carbon dioxide is released. Oxygenated blood is carried from the gills to body tissues. I didn't talk about how the, the gills will also release carbon dioxide into the water. That's waste product. Now, a few other interesting things that fish have. A swim bladder. A swim bladder is a, is a recent invention. You only find it in uh, bony fish, 
Not the earlier fishes, which are the uh, jawless fish or the cartilaginous fish, but the bony fish have a swim bladder, which is a, like a balloon inside their body. And the fish can fill that balloon with, with oxygen. And as the fish fills the balloon with oxygen from their bloodstream, oxygen in their bloodstream can go to the swim bladder and it can expand, then they float higher in the water. It's for controlling their depth. Have you ever been looking at a fish in a fish tank and it's just staring at you and it's not swimming and then it kind of float, goes up or goes down? It's chain, it can change its buoyancy without having to swim just by fit, inflating or deflating the swim leg. Now think about this. What does this remind you of? A big balloon-like thing of air in the middle of the body? A lung. A lung. Good call, Drew. Do it, Drew. That's where the lungs come from. That is the start of the evolution of the lung. And you see lungs in the amphibians. The lungs are just swim bladders that have that have formed a connection with the mouth so that the amphibian can fill the lung with air by breathing oxygen. There are actually some fish that can do it. They're called lungfish. And they actually have a connection. Dolphins. Not dolphins. Whales. Those, are, those are mammals. Those are mammals. I'll show you some lungfish. <laughs> Nephrons are waste filtering units. Um, uh, we have kidneys that have nephrons. I'll talk more about nephrons later, but the word nephron means a filtering unit. To get the waste out of the fish's body, it has these special formations called nephrons. We have those two in our kidneys. And basically the blood empties its waste products into the nephron, and then the fish can pee out the waste. Good deal. Nice. That's the brain of a fish. There's not much to it. Oh, this stuff's not showing up too well. The colors. We, do we need to close, close one of those blocks and see if that helps? Just the drawings aren't. Yeah. There we go. Whoa. The, uh, <clears throat> the optic lobe there, that's for vision. The cerebellum is for um, uh, muscle control. Medulla oblongata controls heart rate and uh, breathing. Olfactory bulb, what's that control? Smells. Smells. No, we have a medulla oblongata. We do. Don't of, we have all of these things. Don't alligators? Uh, all, all, all vertebrates have all these things. Fish spawn? That's releasing sperm and eggs into the water. My turn. Bye, please. You release your sperm into the water, you release your eggs into the water, hopefully the sperm meet the eggs and form, an, form a larvae that will grow into a fish. Yes, Graham? Do fish have ears? Uh, fish do not. They, uh, they have pressure sensors called a lateral line that I'll show you in just a bit. Can I get the right They don't have ears, yes. I guess you may. Do fish have eyes? Do you have eyes. Are you stupid? What's the fish that has the one eye? It's called a game of fun. Oh, the one that goes. Virtue. But it's like. Flounder. Yeah. Why are you getting up? Just on this Sorry. Now let's go through the three major types of fish jawless fish, cartilaginous fish, bony fish. These are the order in which these things evolved. We start with the jawless fish. They're known as lamprey or hagfish. This is one right here. What is that a picture of its head? That's its head. Those are its little gill openings. Lampreys, they no longer filter feed. What they do is they attach to the body of an animal and suck its blood. Another, another fish, usually. So it looks like a little, um, like... Hagfish feed on dead stuff. Like that bird with the big feet. There's a lamprey. Oh. They have a mouth, but they don't have jaws. They cannot close that mouth. If you put your finger right there, it couldn't bite it. But, if you put your arm right there, it could suction onto your arm, and these little teeth penetrate it, and uh, blood comes out. 
Is that life size? I don't know how big yeah, that is. That's life size. <laughs> <laughs> I think they're about like that. <laughs> I think you know about that. Do I have to do You like big fish? Nah, they attach to other fish. Whoa. This is a hagfish? And hagfish okay, have an interesting. See? Listen. When the going gets tough, the tough. I don't know what that says. Nah, that's not what it says. The hagfish have an it. Listen. The hagfish have an interesting um, type of defense mechanism. When you grab them in the water, usually, they uh, release a whole bunch of mucus and blood that covers their bodies and it makes them really hard to hold on to. So in the ocean, if something grabs them and tries to eat them, they become very, very slippery. These things normally just crawl around the ocean floor eating dead stuff. And you can see they, their gloves are kind of slippery and bloody because the hagfish are kind of nasty. Here we see the evolution of jaws once again, how the jaw became more and more forward uh, and so the jawless fish evolved into jawed fish. Let's take a look at that. We are still linked to evolutionary changes that occurred underwater hundreds of millions of years ago. Changes that seem to have nothing to do with us, like the development of gills and fish. Placed behind the head, the first gills consisted of a number of arches through which blood flowed. Oxygen in the water could then pass through the arches membranes into the bloodstream. In time, some of the gill arches were adapted to serve other uses. The need to digest food more efficiently or become a better hunter led to the creation of a more highly developed mouth. A mouth that could also serve as a formidable weapon. Once the mouth evolved and the fish could chew things, they didn't have to filter feed anymore. Filter feeding is taking advantage of small particles floating around. And you open your mouth and you just filter the water of the small particles. But if you want to eat something big, you need jaws and you can chew it up and make it into small particles. And so that's what the evolution of jaws did. It made it so organisms could eat bigger things. And so when these fish develop their, develop their jaws, we no longer call them jawed fish, jawless fish. We call them cartilaginous fish. Yeah, that'd be, that'd be, that'd be, that'd be, that'd be that would be that would be not good. 28.1 and 28.2? 28.1 only. Yeah, we're in 28.2 right Oh, we're in 28.2? Yeah. yeah. I've gone too far! Woo! <laughs> What's <laughs> OMG! Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Good job. Yeah. Who, who, who caught me on that? Me and Larry. Good job. I did. I, mean, I was going to say worse than mine. Let's start the fish video and tomorrow we'll finish it. I didn't want to say that because I said like twice. Can I turn us off, bro? Uh, yes, uh, Willis, Willis out.